let's assume for just a second that we were in a pandemic, for instance, and we had an opportunity to take this moment in our lives, this thing that has occurred, and we have had an opportunity to to change which fundamentally hasn't been working for so many students. Students who have dropped out. Students who have failed out. Students who have given up. And let's for also assuming that with the coming of, let's say, a pandemic or something, we have an opportunity then to do something about it, to change the way that we thought about things, change the way in which we envision what education is. And instead of looking towards this as an opportunity for innovation, we decided to try to keep things as normal as possible. It's a shame. We had an opportunity we could have done something. We, we could have taken this as an opportunity to do something different with the way that we educate. Yeah, sure, we tried to do the... To, to try to use Zoom and Google Meets and all these sort of apps to try to make it as normal as possible, but maybe the answer wasn't make this normal. Maybe the answer wasn't, let's try to keep things the same. Perchance the answer... ...isn't about keeping things. It's about learning from our past mistakes and taking this time to reflect. To really dive into what is going on. What I have found out more than anything from this pandemic is how many students pass because I am there pestering them. And now that there is no more of that, that it is all or some online or hybrid or whatever, there is something fundamentally distanced and, and wrong with the way that we have done public education for so long. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I have the magical answers up my sleeves as if I can say, well, I have all of the answers and they're up my sleeves. I don't. But it is a shame that we did not take this as the moment where we reflected on the way that we have done a pub public education and we've done something to it. We tried to change it and we didn't do that. We try to keep things the same, because if things are the same, then hopefully, cognitively in our brains, we, we can trick ourselves into thinking that the way that we are learning and teaching during a pandemic is okay. It's not. Here are some of my ideas, and I'm not saying my ideas are great, but here are some of the missed opportunities we've had during this pandemic. Okay, for starters... I don't know about all of my students. There are a few of them, a small amount, that are actually doing really well online. And I mean full online. Students that have always wanted the opportunity to do stuff at home because they had other obligations, jobs, whatever. They couldn't make it to school. Those individuals that are still driven, but are doing well, we need to give them that opportunity all the time. And I mean it. Now, that doesn't mean that they're going to show up on whatever the time is, but what a missed opportunity. We could have made that a staple. Students who wanted to learn at home, we can still count them for attendance somehow. We could still meet with them after school during these hours whatever these these moments are that is a great opportunity for those kids there's not very many of them but that needs to be a stable for those students who are doing well and actually like being at home and doing the work 
and have other obligations. They no longer have to just come to the school. That is a great opportunity that we missed. The idea that is learning in school a building? Sure, yeah, it might be a little bit more work on me, but that's two or three other kids who would have just failed out and dropped out that are now doing so much more because they have the opportunity to do those stuff asynchronous when they need to. And that is my point number two, asynchronous learning. What a failed opportunity. opportunity that is. And I think it's just because us as teachers who are just trying to learn this and, and do this as best as we can, we didn't take the time or the effort to to really dive in what does it mean to be asynchronous and what students actually excel at that kind of learning. What students are intrinsically motivated to actually show up whenever they feel like and just get things done when they can. What a great what opportunity. opportunity. Here's something that I found interesting that we should have done. For so long, we have had class from 8 to 12.30. I think the only good thing that we have done so far with that time is shortened it to 8 to 12.30. It used to be 8 to 1, now it's 8 to 12.30. I like that the classes are short. I like that we can be more precise. And I mean, yeah, we lose some time on certain things, but that's just, that takes some adjustment, and I get that. But what I'm talking about is... Sure, we've shortened the time, but what what were to happen if we were to expand it? Expand the whole curriculum, okay? I'm talking not just having school from 8 to 3 or 8 to 12.30. Why can't we make it so that the individual classes can be chosen by the hour? Why can't you take... English 2 at 5.30 p.m. Hmm? Why can't we have the opportunity, opportunity to change when you have a math class? You don't like it at 8 in the morning. I sure know I wouldn't. Why not at 4 or 6 or 10 or whenever the, the opportunity, opportunity presents itself? I think it's time we start really battling and challenging why do we have school at the hours in which we have them? That was a golden opportunity, opportunity. Where, where in this year we could have experimented with when we have classes. You know how when we were like, we have this hybrid going on and, and you know, I'm teaching the six classes or in this case, the, the five classes, the five different English twos. What if I had more the opportunity? opportunity? Let's say first hour. And we keep the same same time limit, about 30 minutes. 30 minutes per class. We have a class at 8. And then we have a class at 9. And then a class at 10. And then a class at 11. And a class at 12. And 1. And 2. And 3. And 4. And 5. And 6. And we just offer it. Okay? We don't really care about necessarily how many students are in each class. What we do is, is then we are able to... What we should be able to do then is look how many students are taking which classes. And then from there, we can split them. Okay, we have 40 students who want to take class at 10 o'clock. Great. We'll have a 10 and a 1030 class. Okay, we only have six students that are wanting to show up for eight, uh, 8 o'clock. But we have seven students that are okay with seven, uh, at 9. Okay, let's consolidate. And we, we do something like an 8.30 or a 9 o'clock class. This way, we can have multiple yeah, opportunities opportunity. for these different classes. Now, yes, I get it. It might be a little more work for the teachers, but I don't think so. What if we just go ahead and we stick with the amount of classes we teach, just five, but now we've stretched it out to... To accommodate with the times. We have a class at 9, and then we have a class at 11, and then we have a class at 1, and then we have a class at 4. I'm still working the same amount of hours, but I have different breaks now. And I can use that as opportunities, opportunities to, to do things like different prep hours. And we wanted to keep things the same. I'm a little upset about that. Wouldn't you want to 
rather have class with me at 7.30 p.m.? And what if... Instead of trying to do things the same, we were able to then reevaluate the entirety of the school system. And then, not the state, but the student gets to choose what skills they want. We, we can then reevaluate and revise all of our curriculums. Sure, the state can dictate how many classes you still need. You know, four English, three math, whatever. But then the teachers can then reevaluate what they're teaching and then create different yeah, opportunities, different, opportunity, different learning oppor yeah, opportunity, opportunities. Sort of similar to how colleges do it. Yeah, you've got your basic classes of Comp 101 and 102 or whatever, but what would, what would, what would happen if... Instead of having like six yeah, opportunities. opportunities for English too, I was able to break that up into different classes. Okay, you have your English two seminar class, which is just looking at different pieces of literature. You have your English two movie class, where we can watch videos, but then we write papers about them. Okay, we have our English two creative writing which could be a precursor to the actual creative writing class which then can be turned into the advanced creative writing class or a novel class where it's just like american novels or or short story and poetry class a mythology class classes that are specific instead of just this is English too, and it's just a wide variety of different things. A Shakespeare class or something. Something that's more specifically tailored to the student rather than tailored to what is the minimum requirements to graduating. What a missed yeah, opportunity. opportunity we could have had. But I get it. It's a lot easier to stay the same and, and realize that we have flaws in our system. Thank you for letting me rant and uh in the comments tell me what are you thankful for because what i'm thankful for is uh there's a break and i think i need it i got some grading i got to do and i will see you on the next video so please make sure you like subscribe um, anything else you got to do got to do it yo